Hello, this is um, a video on inverse normal problems, part three here. Um, and when we do an inverse problem, an example here, a manufacturer process um, produces bolts with a mean weight of 75, standard deviation of 4 grams. 10% of the bolts are rejected because they are too heavy. Okay, so the heavier ones here are the 10% on the right-hand end. Calculate the weight. So the, what's the minimum weight? We're looking for that X value here of the um, minimum weight of the bolts when um, we know that 10% are rejected. Um, so on your calculators, we do it slightly different. Go to statistics on your calculators, number two, and then to uh, distribution, F5, normal, F1. But instead of using F2, which we used before, we're going to go to F3, which is inverse normal, with an inverse normal. And the first um, is still on variable. We go down to, now we can choose which area we have on the graph. Um, now some older calculators will only find the area from the um, left hand tail. So I want to find this x value. If you've got an older calculator you could put in um, you know 10% is the right hand area, so you know this must be 0 0.9 or 0 0.90 is your area on the left hand end. Or if you've got a, um, a later calculator, you can choose which tail to put in or, or to take the centre, the tail, or, or the right or left tail. So I might take the um, right hand tail, which is my F2. And that area, that right-hand tail, I know is this area here. So my um, right-hand area, I put in as 0 0.1. 0 0.1. My standard deviation is 4. And my mean is 75. And if I execute that, my x value is 80. Comes up with a value of 80.1. And that, when you look at the graph, that would seem right. That if 75 is the mean, 80 could be a possible value for x. So you can see before when we were using the normal curve, we were finding what the shaded area was. Now with an inverse, the reverse of that, we're given, we know the shaded area, we're looking for the value at the bottom of the graph. What's the weight or what's the length of that percentage? Okay, well let's look at another example. A lotto agency's mean weekly sales of lotto tickets is $3,500, the standard deviation of $650. The sales are normally distributed. What value of weekly sales would the agency exceed 85% of the time? So again, you can um, always draw your sketch. Put in the mean is 3,500. And my standard deviation is 650. So what sales, this is the amount of sales, the mean, would the agency exceed 85% of the time? Well, here's 50% of the time they've got that many sales at least. 50, so let's say 85 is up to here. So I need to find this x value. And I know that my red shaded area is 0 0.85. We have to put that in as a decimal in the calculator. So um, if I go up here, distribution, normal, 
inverse normal. I'm looking at the left hand tail here. I've got a left hand tail and my area is 0 0.85 my standard deviation is 650 mean is 3500 and execute, execute I have a value here of 4173 dollars, I'll round it up in 70 cents. Okay, and that makes sense to me if my mean is 3,500. So what value of weekly sales would the agency exceed? Ah, uh, now we've done that wrong, haven't I? What value would the agency exceed 85% of the time? Um, it's no okay we've done a mistake some of these are hard to work out they don't exceed that value 85% of the time 85% of the time that's the top value that they would get But if I did my graph like this, with my 85% that side, there's $3,500. They're going to exceed that value 85% of the time. 85% of the time they're going to be greater than that value. So I should be looking at a tail to the right. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can see it's sometimes a little tricky to think of what they're asking. Always, when you get an answer, see I, I got the answer 4,173 and I thought, oh, do they exceed that amount 85% of the time? No, they don't. They only exceed that amount 15% of the time. 15% of the time they get more than that. But 85% of the time they get more than this lower value here. So if I change that, go back to my calculator, and put a tail right. This value down here is $2,826. So they exceed $2,826 85% of the time. Okay, another one. We've got one more to practice. M&Ms, I like M&Ms. Their weight is normally distributed with a mean of 14 and a standard deviation of 1.2. Now the quality controller rejects 15% of M&Ms because they're too small. So down here we have 15% that are too small. That's an easier one to work out. What would be the minimum weight? So what would be the weight here that if they're less than that, they're rejected. So my, um, go back to this, my tail is a left tail, my area is 0 0.15, my standard deviation is 1.2, and my mean is 14. So this value here is 12.7, we could even round up to 12.8 grams, would be the minimum weight. Below that, they would be too small, they would be in that 15%. 
This is often used for quality control. Um, and we'll look at a few more of those examples next week. Okay, thank you.